Hello again everyone. So tonight I'm going to do my video on the Soul Urge 6. Now I've had a request from one of my lovely commenters about Soul Urge 6 and how it supports the Life Path 1. But before I put that Soul Urge 6 Life Path 1 video out there, I always like to do the main, the, do a video on the main Soul Urge number 6 on its own first before I start relating it to whether it helps or hinders a life path. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk a little bit how you um, calculate your soul urge, but you can always skip this that bit if you're um, if you already know how to work out your soul urge number. And I'm going to talk about what you love when you're a soul urge six, what you long for. And I'm going to break it down into the individual specific soul urge numbers for you guys so you get a bit more of a specific idea. So when you're a soul urge number six, your interest and your motivation, that little fuzz that you get in your belly that gets you really excited and motivated, you know, when you're a soul urge six, you're motivated by your, your visions of the ideal. You know, you have lots of fantasies and imaginations about what the world would be like if it was if it was a manifestation of what you feel is ideal in this world where everyone is looked after or it might be that nobody is hungry and everybody is cared for. Whatever your ideals are, you're here to be, you're, you're, you're interested in and motivated by your visions of a better world. And you like and love to be the change that you want to see. In other words, you like to act and manifest your keen ideals to help people and help the vulnerable, to help and heal others, because you're, you want to live the ideals that you, that you desire and you hope for, especially those that are vulnerable and those that are less fortunate. This is something that you really love to do. Excuse me yet again. Yes, hello. You always come through the cat flap when I start to reveal. Oh, you're, you're very naughty. Come on. Out you go. Out you go. Good boy. Good boy. Sorry about that. As you may have noticed on other videos, the cats hardly come through the cat flap all day. But when I start a video, they're suddenly present in and out, in and out, in and out, disrupting my videos. Bless their little hearts. It's a good job I love them to bits, isn't it? So when you're a soul urge six you have ideals of what of making the world a better place and you you like to manifest those ideals by helping those that are vulnerable helping them healing them sometimes too much sometimes you can be a bit too much of a helper because you just love to help people and especially those that are vulnerable those that are less fortunate you know you want to bring peace and harmony and safety to your family to your community and your family you'll very much want to be the nurturer the advisor the teacher and and being that way nurturing others teaching others advising others really gets you all excited and motivated and drives you to move forward so just quick if you're not quite sure how to work out your soul urge number, then watch the next bit. But this bit is in all my soul urge videos, so just skip this bit if it's something you've seen before. So working out your soul urge number, you need the vowels of your full birth name. First name, any middle names, any and all middle names, and your last name. Okay, so the vowels you need to add up, reduce to get your soul urge number. However, if you see down here, we have a Y. Sometimes that Y, even though it is a consonant, is considered a vowel because it makes the vowel sound in a word. For example, when Y is a vowel, if the Y is the first letter of a name and then that first letter is followed by a consonant like Yvonne or Yvette, you notice the Y makes that vowel sound E, Yvonne, Yvette. So it's like it's it takes the place of the vowel in that word. So in that situation, Yvonne, Yvette, that Y at the beginning of the word will be part of your soul urge number because it is the, the vowel sound. OK, if the Y is the last letter of a name and it comes after a consonant, again, it's a vowel because you have bar e. And again, the Y is the vowel sound at the end of the word. Barry, Tommy, 
Jim Me, and it's after a consonant. So that Y at the end of your name, if you have a Y at the end of your name after a consonant, that is actually a vowel and should be included in your sole urge. So if Y is the first letter of your name, but it's followed by another vowel, then that second vowel will take the vowel sound. So that first Y would be considered a consonant because the second vowel takes the, 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 the takes will take the vowel sound, if I'm being clear. Like Mickey, the E will be the vowel sound, so the Y at the end of Mickey will be a consonant, okay? If the Y is found between two consonants, again, it's a vowel because it is the vowel, it is considered a vowel and it will be in your soul urge because it is the vowel sound in the word. Like Kyle, you know, the Y is considered the vowel sound in the name Kyle, so the, the Y and the E would be added to um, Kyle's soul urge okay if the y is between two vowels however of course the y is a consonant because the two vowels take that vowel sound okay um, if the y is between a vowel and a consonant it's likely that the y will be a consonant um, as long as when you say the name it's that first vowel or the vowel and the consonant that makes that vowel sound first then the y will be a consonant but there are there are situations where that might be a little bit different, but you can almost you always ask me if you have a name that might be mm, is my is my name is the Y in my name a vowel or not? You can always ask me. So in the name Sydney, two Ys there. The first Y is a vowel, and the second Y is a consonant because the first vowel here is is between two consonants, so it makes that vowel sound. But the end Y comes after a vowel, so the vowel goes to the E, so that goes to your personality number. So the first Y is your soul urge, the second Y is your personality number. And in Billy, Sylvia, the S and the L, Missy, Kyle, Blythe, Sylvester, the, the Y is a vowel in that name. But in K, because the A before the Y, Yeltsin, May, Y is a consonant. OK, but you can always ask me questions if you're unsure about my um, explanation there. So if I was working out the soul urge of this young lady here, she has no middle name on her birth certificate. She has a first name and a surname, just like my mum. You know, not everyone has a middle name. So this person, Samantha Johnson, what I've done is I've taken her full name on her birth certificate, which is just Samantha and Johnson, and I've picked up the vowels, which are three A's, there are no Y's there, and added them together because A is one, three A's is a three. So for Samantha, uh, the soul urge is three. Johnson, the only two vowels here are the two O's and there's no Y, so it's six plus six um, equals twelve. And then one plus two equals three. So adding those two big numbers up for Samantha and Johnson, they're both three soul urge numbers, we come to a six. So Samantha Johnson is a soul urge six. So what may motivates you when you're a soul urge six? This is the meat of the soul urge. So as I've said, you've got a really strong passion and interest for keeping those idealistic flames alive that vision of a world where everybody is happy and at peace and taken care of this is something that really really drives you and motivates you to move forward all the time you're motivated by your visions of the perfect and the ideal calling you to do your best in everything you do you see problems as opportunities to learn and evolve because you still have a good idea on reality you're happy that life is unfolding just as it should, and you love to share your utopian vision. So you have a utopian vision of the perfect, and you work every day to come towards that utopian vision. But when you're at your best and you're, you're really feeling your passion, you don't feel any upset that the world isn't already a utopia. When you're low, you may have times where your soul urge is thinking, why, why is the world such a terrible place? And you might have times when you're feeling low that the, the cruelty that we often see in the world or the media really pushes forward because we are balanced. You know, the world isn't all bad. Remember, the universe is a balance. But sometimes when a soul urge sits, 
maybe watches the news too much or you know listens or watches things that are negative or bad things happen in the world it can make the soul urge six feel quite low sometimes um, but when you're on a high you know the soul urge six works every day towards their ideals and they're happy that life is unfolding as it should and that their ideals are being worked towards that's when they're that's when you're feeling good when you're really feeling your passion for your soul urge six you're motivated you're driven to work hard for a less better world to help less fortunate improve their lives to inspire give people hope direction peace safety security you love to give that to others and really help them improve their lives you're a passionate humanitarian you love to be a healer a cause fighter a justice seeker a, even a mediator a very very sensible advisor you like to be the one that helps everyone and helps to sort out their problems and make their lives better that really drives you that's what gives you that real buzz that real wow you know, that feeling that you've helped someone or made someone smile or improved their lives in some way, made them more peaceful or comfortable, made them feel loved even, you know, you just love to bring harmony, peace, truth, justice and calmness and love and comfort to any environment. You know, it's all about comfort when you're a soul urge six, soul urge six love being in harmony and being comfortable. They also love aesthetics and beauty and creativity. Sixes love music. You could be a passionate musician or singer. You might not necessarily want other people to hear you do it, but this is something you love. So you might use it as part of your um, career, especially if it's part of your life path, that would be a good thing. But it might be something that you just love to do for leisure. You know, not everything has to be done in your career. Um, passionate mu for music, um, maybe being a musician or even a singer. You love to be beautiful. You love to make things beautiful like yourself or your home. You love homewares, furnishings, um, you know, beautiful hair, making yourself look and feel good. But not just yourself, but your environment as well. You just love beauty, artistry. And you like to look nice, you like home furnishings, you like your environment to look nice. You're very, very family orientated. You love to be at home with your comfortable family, giving them love and comfort. Um, you're sensible, you're, you're parental, very nurturing, loving, compassionate, warm. Your typical earth mother, that's what you love when you're a soul urge six. You wanna be that all encompassing, comforting, loving earth mother. Um, you love to build close, sincere relationships. You're a loyal friend. You know, it's good to have a soul urge six. It's good to have a six in your life because they're such a nurturing person. But, you know, when you're a soul urge six, you can be a bit of a meddler because you just love to help people so much. Sometimes you can do a bit too much and sort of, you know, push yourself a bit too much on people when you need to be stepping back because the soul urge six needs boundaries. OK, when you're really buzzing on your soul urge six, you must always keep in mind you need boundaries for yourself and you need to respect the boundaries of others. For example, there's going to be times when you're helping someone that you need to step back and look after yourself, look after your own family, get some sleep, have something to eat, see your family, see your friends. You know, you need to take that balanced time out for you. And on the other person's perspective, they have a life path to walk. They don't necessarily want you to be fixing everything and walking their path for them. In that case, then you're overstepping their boundaries. So it's important when you're a soul urge six, because you love to help others, that you establish boundaries on how much you will do and, and you know when to step back so that you're not meddling too much in people's lives because your, your good intentions to help other people can tip too far the other way if you become too much of a meddler and you step on people's life paths. So be, be sure that you know when to step back and let them take over and take after your, look after yourself and your own family and your own interests. OK, so boundaries are important for a soul urge six. You know, you love to build close sincere relationships you're a loyal friend as i've said a motivated socializer you love seeing people you love seeing friends very extroverted natural nurturer caring bit of a fixer as i've just said boundaries are important you're responsible you like to be responsible you like to be helpful you like to be selfless 
um, you're a good teacher, you know, you'd love to be a teacher helping other people out. Um, quite conventional, very much the stable provider and the stable protector. So that's in a nutshell what you love and what drives you when you're a soul urge six. When you're a one five six, so we're getting down into the specifics here. So the first line and a half is the six soul urge, which I've taken down into. So when you're a soul urge number one five six, you are motivated first and foremost by your visions of a better world you want to be the living and manifestation manifesting embodiment of the ideals that you believe in so you you do and uh, practice the change that you want to see the ideals that you want to see in the world you support causes and you help those less fortunate to bring them peace well-being and safety that's for all the soul urge sixes and you'll see that all of them have that same repeated sentence because that is for the all important soul urge six it's here however where i go into the specifics of like the the the, the, the sub the sub numbers of the soul urge so these are the energies that you that you want to achieve in order to fully express your passionate soul urge six so when you're a one five six you want to develop focus and discipline towards freedom okay so you're the kind of person when you're a nurturing six you want a specialism within that nurture so that could be reiki it could be crystals it could be something that really really fascinates you you need to, you love and want to be a specialist in whatever that passionate nurturing subject is so when you're a 156 soul urge you love to nurture others with your specialism and your discipline and your innovative ideas so soul urge 6 likes to nurture each other nurture other people and the world and their community using their specialism and to be innovative within that specialism so you want to develop focus a nurturing specialism that you feel strongly about in the five and then advance this specialism with realistic innovative new ideas that you can take forward and nurture people even more that's if you're a soul urge one five six if you're a soul urge two four six you have the same three or two and a half lines that you that you're a, you you're a man you want to be a manifesting embodiment of the ideals that you hold um support causes help those less fortunate you know you're still a, a six but you do it slightly differently you like to achieve you're motivated to achieve your nurturing um drive with the four energy first and foremost so you like to be organized you like to have a step-by-step -step plan for how you're going to nurture and look after others. You know, you, you, you feel stable when you have a plan and you know each step of what you're going to do. You feel stable and secure with procedures. So when you nurture people, you like to have plans and procedures so that you know everything is done step by step and nothing is missed out. So it's very important to you when you're a nurturing 246 that you that you carry out your nurturing activities having goals having a step-by-step -step plan following rules and procedures to make sure every nothing goes wrong to make sure that person is properly looked after without any problems because you followed policy and procedure brilliantly okay and you love to follow policy and procedure when you're looking after people because it makes you feel safe and secure that you're doing the right thing for that person and then secondary working as part of a team to help nurture so when you're a 246 you're very much about using rules procedure goals and you know step-by-step -step plans so that you can nurture and care for others in a very very exacting way to make sure nothing goes wrong and that person is totally safe and secure and you like to do that as part of a team so you're a very when you're a 246 soul urge you like to nurture people but you like to do it according to the rules and the procedures to make sure it's done right and you like to do it as part of a team that's where your passion lies when you're a master 336 soul urge you're 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 motivated very much so because you're a master number 
to develop your intense spiritual potential abilities you want you really want to develop your intuition and your empathy and your ability to be psychic and channel ideas and commune with source energy and listen to your intuition very very spiritual and you really really love and want to develop those abilities yeah you're passionately motivated to creatively artistically or verbally or all three to express your emotions in whether it's with your words you can express your emotions with your music you can express your emotions with your art um, the way you speak to people you can express your emotions by the way you behave around people and express your emotions and sensitivity in a positive way okay to nurture others in that 33 6 so you love performance to to inspire and heal and entertain you love performance to make people feel good because it's part of your nurturing that you love to do you know you love performance you love public speaking as long as it's positive and it in it you know in it in raptures and helps and heals people you love to heal with your art you might love to heal with your music anything that requires emotional expression to the world to an audience so that you can use it to heal to inspire to inform and delight you're motivated by helping people in that way and of course as as always in the six you're motivating motivated by your vision of a better world and the idea that your self-expression your actions your words your art your music whatever you do creatively will help to manifest your ideal world in some way to help and heal others using your 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 spirituality your creativity and your nurturing compassionate amazing personage but not to just heal the people around you when you're a master 33 6 we're talking about the world here this is you know you you don't when you're a soul urge master 33 6 you think big you're passionate about healing the world not just your family not just your local community you want your ideas your expression your your healing and nurturing teachings you want that to go global so that you heal a wider variety of people this is a very very big hearted soul urge to have because it's a, a very high energy it's a very very giving energy and if it's your soul urge you're going to put your heart and soul into expressing and executing for the world not just for the community or for the people around you for the world so this is a big, big, big soul urge to have. OK, when you have a soul urge, master 33, six, because you want to be parental, you want to be responsible, you're, you're spiritual, you're a nurturer. You always want to help you inspire, you delight, you heal, you help the less fortunate. This just drives you. It gives you a buzz. But be careful not to exhaust yourself, because when you're a master 33, six soul urge, the intensity of your desire to help others is extremely strong. So those boundaries are very, very important here. You don't want to exhaust yourself or meddle too much in other people's lives and overstep their boundaries. OK, so large 42, six. I've forgotten to switch those round. Dear, oh dear, accuracy is not my strong point. So soul urge number 426 is just the 246 switch the other way. So whereas the six that is a 246 are very important when it comes to procedures and rules and making sure they nurture people to a procedure, a rule and a goal and a plan. The, the, the 426 switches that round a bit. And the two energy is more important to you when you're a 426 soul urge. You're more about people working cooperatively around people. So your biggest thing is you want to nurture those around you. You want to look after those around you and promote your better world with your actions, manifesting help and healing towards others. But you want to do that as part of a really close team where you work together cohesively and passionately and you get the job done as a team to nurture others so you might work you might want to be a part of a caring or nurturing team of people and then after that you 
it's important that your team and the people around you follow the correct rules and procedures and steps to make sure your six energy or the soul urge of your six energy is properly expressed. So when you're a 426, to me, that soul urge is very much the soul urge of a carer in a team because they want to care for others in an emotional and practical way. But they want to work as part of a team and you often work as part of a team when you're a carer. And it's very important when you're a carer that you follow procedures, that you follow rules, that you follow um, all the statute, all the laws relating to it. So I very much see the 426 as definitely the, 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 the soul urge of a carer. The same with 2-4. But in 246, it's more procedures based and less team based. So you could think that the 246 is the carer's um, soul urge as well. I think possibly both of them are definitely the carer's soul urge, working as a team, following procedure to make sure people are cared for and nurtured. And you know what? It could be a teacher as well, because teachers work as part of a team. And they, they have to follow rules and procedures and guidelines and laws in order to nurture the children and teach and advise them. So there are many ways your soul urge can be expressed when you're a 246 or a 426 soul urge. OK, so you're very much about the two more importantly when you're a 426, socialising, building relationships, promoting peace and harmony to get the job done as part of your team, often behind the scenes. Uh, but also to be organized, have a plan, have a procedure so that your organization or your nurturing is stable and secure and you work tirelessly to achieve that. So you're very much a hard worker. And I would say the 246 um, is a very, very hard worker when it comes to caring because the four is prone to be quite a workaholic number. So when you're a 246, and especially with the two and six, you might work too hard and forget your boundaries totally because the two and the six sometimes work too hard and don't um, look after their own boundaries. And the four fully expressed can be quite a workaholic. So you have a bit of those tendencies when you're a four, two, four and a four, two, six soul urge, you know, boundaries and uh, boundaries to how much work you should do and what you should do to other for others is very important okay five one six so again this is similar to the one five six but it's just switching those numbers around so you're always here to nurture and heal the world just like all the soul urge sixes that's what they want to do it's not necessarily their path or their talent it's just something they want to do because it's their soul urge so you want to help and heal the world but first and foremost you want to do it in an innovative way so you want to nurture and teach and help other people and help the vulnerable in a new way you don't want to do you don't want to look after others in the conventional way you want to bring innovation to nurturing you want to bring innovation to caring to teaching to advising to make it better bring new ideas to the idea of nurturing others that need it and then using those innovative ideas as part of a, a disciplined specialism so it's just the one five six switch the other way around so instead of focusing on your specialism that the one five six would do you're going to be more focused on you on innovation new ideas that you can channel from source energy that you can use to help and teach and nurture people for your six soul urge and those, those innovative ideas that you love to bring forward to nurture others are going to be part of a specialism or a focus that you love the most within the teaching, advising, nurturing, healing sphere. And that could be any specific subject that you find are most passionate about. Anything from being an NHS worker to being a crystal healer or a or a numerologist that might be your specialism and you might want to be innovative <coughs> innovative in your specialism in order to nurture heal and advise okay so that's what you're passionate about when you're a 516 you know you want to be unique and innovative you want to channel unique 
groundbreaking new ideas that and lead others to the fruition of these ideas. So it brings nurture and teaching forward into the 21st century. And you know, you'd like you want to have a specialism that you focus on with discipline to achieve that freedom that you would love to have. Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me, dear oh dear. So last and but not least, and the most rarest of the soul urge numbers is the 606. So when you're a 606, you're a very intense nurturer. Excuse me. <coughs> dear oh dear. So the zero within the, the 606 gives you added spiritual abilities, added perceptions, added intuitions. And this and it also intensifies even more that energy of the six. So it's a very intensely spiritual six energy. So you're like a, a soul urge six. You, you know, you're, you want to be a practical embodiment of the ideals that you believe in, support causes that you believe in, help those less fortunate, bring them peace and nurturing, comfort, peace, all the things that a soul urge six wants. Um, but to achieve this, you use spirituality very much so, like the 33 six does. But you use your perceptions, channeling, spiritual intuition, you like to listen to, you, you, you love to use your enhanced perceptions. You might be an empath. Um, you might like read other people and maybe even know their needs before they do when you're a, when you a 606. So that's that's what you're passionate about being. You want to when you're a soul urge 606, you want to be that, you know, that to be a, to manifest that your visions of a higher of a, of a better world um support causes help those fortunate bring peace but you want to do so using your spirituality as well as practically helping so you will channel from source your intuition or ideas that are just going to be the right thing to help that person at the time because you've got added perceptions and abilities and you're going to suddenly know you're going to think you know how can I nurture this person and you're going to naturally want to be able to channel the answers for how you're going to nurture that person from source energy maybe you might meditate on how you might nurture or teach or advise a person because you like to use your spiritual abilities to aid you in your decision making so whereas the the four two and the two four six like rules and procedures and they like to follow them when they're nurturing people when you're a six zero six you like to do it very spiritually you're not into the rules and the procedures and the the, the tangible things you like to channel spiritual information to help heal people kind of like the 33 does so you're less about procedures you're going to be more about nurturing people the spiritual way okay very much using your your spiritual abilities and channeling intuition and ideas and almost knowing how that person is feeling before they do and you can use that then you'll want to use that because that's what drives you to nurture others so when you're a 606 you are a spiritual nurturer you nurture others you advise others but you 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 take that information from your perceptions and source energy okay now i hope you found my video really useful today if you're a soul urge six if you haven't subscribed already please do so click that bell icon because that'll keep you up to date with all my latest uploads please uh, slam a like on this video it really helps me out if you like my video and if you'd like to request a video you know contact me on the description box of my videos or send me an email contact me on social media you might like a one-to-one -one reading with me so contact me on email i'll talk to you about all your core numbers your your life path your purpose um your, all your talents that you bring with you i'll help you pull together your blueprint so that you'll know the best thing for you to do in this incarnation what your purpose is and the talents you brought with you to do it and it will also show you what the conditions are going to be like for you over the next couple of years and the best time to do things and the best time not to start things or you know I can I can give you and help you with all that information within a reading. So please contact me if you're interested in a reading. If you want to learn about numerology, I'm going to put a link to my Udemy course, which teaches you all the basics about numerology. 
So click on that link if you just want to learn about numerology. Email me or contact me on social media if you want to request a video or a reading or just simply have a chat and ask me a question. I love to hear from you guys. But as ever, guys, I want you to trust the soul within you, because as I will always say, only your own inner voice and your own intuition knows what's best. See you soon.